Do you ever start out a project thinking to yourself, I am so unqualified to make this, but you're just like, whatever, I'm gonna try it anyway and see what happens. Then you know what it's like to make Chopin's. Hey everyone, this is Amber from DSA Threads, and this week, month, year, whatever, I attempted to make some shoes. I'm not exactly sure what the name is for them because it's really it just gets so confusing um, as to Italian footwear. I had no idea. So um, I'm gonna call them Chopines or maybe they're Pentoflos. I don't know. I really don't know. And honestly, I had really no idea what I was doing. But sometimes we just do the thing, right? Sometimes we just jump in and we make it. So. Here's my process. <laughs> okay, research. So when I started out, I went to Francis Class's Raised Heels website, which I will link in my description. It's, I mean, really, you have to go check it out. It's the best. And I started looking for examples of um, this version of shoe, potentially in the Florentine fashion, because it seems to be very popular um, for Venetians. But it did exist for the Florentines. Um, we see examples of this in Moda a Firenze, which is another source that I use a lot. There's a couple of those shoes that you can see. Um, and then also, I looked in women's dress patterns by the VNA because this is a, an amazing book. There's so many close-ups. They even do X-rays, and they actually show you like all the pattern pieces and how it would have been constructed. And I needed that just as a clue of like how to make this, not necessarily because I was trying to make it as it was. When I started out, I was not sure what to do at all. <laughs> but I remember looking at my yoga block, uh, which is made out of cork, and thinking, okay, they were made out of cork or wood, can I do this? And actually, I believe on Francis's website, he says don't do this. But, of course, I decided I wanted to try it anyway. I was like, how on earth do I cut this thing in half? So I started out by just using a knife that didn't work. Um, I was like, I have a miter saw, but it was too big for the miter saw. So finally I settled on cutting it open with a jigsaw. This is what it looks like when it's done. So it was a little rough. There are a couple of places where I messed up and I had to go in and like glue pieces back on. Um, but overall in the end that really didn't matter, which is great. So <laughs> thank goodness cork is a little forgiving in that manner. I decided to use this tool and this is actually a cardboard cutter. It's actually not really very sharp at all because I like have this fear of knives and so <laughs> it's it, it works really well with the cork and it kind of just sort of like sands it at the same time as it's trying to cut it and so I did trace out my foot so there's a pattern here of my foot and the overall shape and then just sort of looking at the shapes of the one in the VNA book to make sure that I was sort of like on the right track. Here you can see me just like cutting off the four corners as I'm starting to shape one of the pieces. And of course all of this happened during election night so I got a lot of stress out uh, from doing this. <laughs> like I just, I just started and like was in this like cork carving frenzy. And here it is, um, I think this is where I just ended up when I just stopped and I was like, cool, I think I've done this. This looks good. This, this looks close to what I want. And then after that, I started drafting out slash draping the muslin on that form just to sort of figure out what the heck, how the heck I was going to sew this together because I didn't look at the VNA for this part. It just, maybe the top part, like whatever that's called, I think it's called like a a vamp. So then once I had a pieces that sort of made sense, I cut them out of the um, cotton velveteen that I was going to use and I started stitching them together. Here you can see the vamp. Um, I decided to use like a vegan leather on the inside and I'm sure that's not at all how you're supposed to do it, but I did it that way anyway. Here you can see I stitched the uh, vamp to the cork itself and then um, I ended up putting the other outer part Parts around that gluing them in place and then the sole was inserted on top 
but then I went in because of some of the pictures and I stitched just the area around the heel, leaving the rest of it sort of free and open and then glued the rest of that down. So here you can see um, for the very bottom piece, which I guess is the sole, I don't know, there's, there's a sole that you put your foot on and then there's a sole on the bottom of the shoe. I poked holes with an awl that I had and then I stitched through. Now, I know that Francis does the um, two different needles at once going in between, so this is not at all what they did. I, I, I went through and I used an X-Acto knife to cut a channel so that when the waxed linen thread I used went through these holes, I was able to pull it tightly enough that when I'm walking, I am not going to be rubbing those because that would be bad if you're walking and you break all of the threads that are basically holding the sole onto the shoe. I did find that putting a nail through the middle actually keeps the thing in place while you're sewing it, so yay for practicality, and that kind of make, kind of clued me into like why that's important and why that thing might have been there um, besides stability. Here you can see that the trim where I am sticking the little nails, decorative nails, into the bottom and what I've learned from talking to other people is that actually this makes things a little bit more stable, like it adds some weight to it at the bottom, um, but then it also kind of gives you a way to attach the trim without in a, in a place where it's very precarious to be able to put your needle through and stitch it on um, by couching. So that's nice. I'm glad that they did that and I was able to do it and I think it turned out really cute. I had to actually like make myself just a plain piece of muslin for the vamp to figure out how the heck they might have laced this thing. And once I had figured that out, I had the length that I needed for making the silk to go through all of these holes. I decided to make eyelets. Um, that's not what you see in there. I don't know if they just poked a hole through and they were like, this is done, this is good enough. So I'm still working through leaving things rough. So I did eyelets which is probably more of a modern thing. And overall, yeah, I'm, I'm like really happy with how this turned out. The whole time I was making this, I really got confused as to what on earth to call them. And I, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video too, but in my conclusions are kind of inconclusive at the moment. What I do know is that a cork version of a platform did exist in Florence around the time that I am making the rest of my garment, and so I felt pretty secure in creating this shoe to go along with the rest of my 1580s Florentine noblewoman's ensemble. They are a little bit smaller than my actual foot size, and that's partially because of I was limited to the size of the cork yoga block, and I still am learning how to walk in them. Like, I, I really need practice. Like, I really need practice. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this little, uh, very chatty um, journey into uh, making these shoes. And yeah, that's it. Have a good time. Bye.